I'm out here today on a neighbor's farm. The blind is right behind the camera. This is where Amy shot muley last year during the archery season. Uh, October 28th, if I remember right. You can see behind me, this is a perennial plot. Looks terrible, right? But there's actually a ton of clover and small burnet in this plot. A lot of it. But I only, I'm only going to mow this plot one time this year. It's early August and I'm about ready to mow this. But before I do, I want to overseed this plot. And this is really kind of an explanation on one planting method that I use. And that's just broadcasting. So in this case, it's a perennial plot. So I'm going to broadcast winter rye and crimson clover. Uh, 40 pounds winter rye, 15 pounds crimson clover per acre. But because there's already clover established here, I'm going to back both of those off just a little bit. And then I'm going to add Ladino or Ladino clover, however you pronounce it, about five pounds per acre as just a top dressing, like an overseeding to keep this perennial plot going. There's really three keys to making a broadcasting plot successful. One, you have to use a seed variety that really grows very well. It's, it's really easy to germinate, thus the winter rye. I also have the, like I said, the crimson clover and the ladino clover, but one of the keys is making sure you have something like winter rye in there that easily germinates. The second would be to do this when there's plenty of soil moisture, especially right at the surface. So as that seed sits down on the surface, it can absorb water and germinate. Another way too is to do this before rain. Today it's Monday. I looked on Wednesday, it's a 90% chance of rain. And even though we're in severe drought, we actually had about five inches of rain here in the last three days. So there's a plenty of surface moisture along with more rain coming on Wednesday. So that's another uh, good way to make sure that a broadcasting method is going to work for you. Another thing to do is when you have these perennial plots like this, broadcast your seed first and then I'm going to mow this. So this will be the, sink, the first mowing, the first and only mowing on this clover plot. But I'm going to broadcast the seed then mow and that'll add a little bit of thatch on top to make sure this uh, seed that I'm putting down grows. So this is one of three methods I use. The other method is I'll broadcast into standing rye. So it'll be rye that's already seeded out about this tall from last year's fall plot. And then I'll just lightly disc over top of that. We're not going to do that today. That'd be method two. And then a third method is using like a no-till drill. So I'm gonna rent a no-till drill from the NRCS here uh, down where I live. And we'll do that here next week, hopefully if, the, uh, if it dries up just a little bit for that no-till drill. So I got my Earthway spreader here. I like this spreader, but I think this is the last time I'm using it. It's got tears all over in it, and uh, the strap actually broke, so I have to wrap it around the the shaft here to kind of make it work, but I think I'm going to have to get a new one. So I'm going to keep the camera rolling. I'm going to broadcast and I'm going to mow and that's it. We'll get some rain. This will come up nice. That's it, just a little bit more. I should mention that a lot of people, a lot of people ask, well, you have such and such spreader. You have this Earthway spreader. What setting should you put it at? My setting thing is busted right off. I don't even have a setting thing. You're better off pre-mixing. So let's say this is a quarter, it's about a quarter acre. So I know I want about 10 pounds of winter rye, maybe about four pounds of crimson clover. So I'll pre-mix that come out here and know that that's the amount of seed I want to put on this quarter acre. Now I'm familiar with this Earthway spreader. I've been using it for, oh, I don't know, 15 years, maybe more. So I'm comfortable knowing kind of what, where I'm going to go, how much I need to broadcast out just by feel. If you're not sure, go over really light. If you only got half your seed, go over light again the other way. Go over it three times. Go uh, light and go cover it two or three times if you have to as opposed to going on too heavy and finding out you put on all your seed on half the acreage and, and oh boy now I'm twice as thick as I need to be. Got a little bit more to put on here and we're gonna mow. When I'm mowing with my rotary mower I mow just low enough that I'm hitting the tops of the clover 
That way I kill all the perennial and annual weeds and just barely nip off the clover. So that's pretty much it. The other thing that makes it real nice about mowing one time, this is I think August 7th, um, you can go a little bit later than that. I'm doing it because our the different farms we're going to hunt this year are spread out and Amy's having surgery on her back in four days. So we got we kind of got some stuff going on this fall. Um, so I didn't want to run out of time. So this is actually probably a little early for me. But when you cut it this late in the year, all your weeds, like this kind of stuff, gets real stemmy. You mow it off one time and it pretty much kills it. When it gets this stemmy so it's just a lot more efficient so that's it broadcast method so amy and i are out today doing the fall plots on our cabin farm and we're standing in a really nice clover plot it's very weedy but it looks it actually looks really good there's a lot of clover in here so kind of my theory again from last night we did we overseeded a clover plot um, on the farm where she shot muley last year this is the cabin farm. It's about a half acre, maybe a third acre of clover. Same thing, I'll come, here and come in here and overseed on a perennial plot and I mow one time a year. Um, we're a little early. Again, we got some stuff coming up this fall, but not too early. I think it's the 8th of August, something like that. Yeah, the 8th. But I'll be overseeding with winter rye, crimson clover, and then I do have some ladino clover also in here to keep this perennial plot uh, going. In my winter rye, because it was, uh, cover crop blend, there's actually some hairy vetch and some radish in there. I'm not saying to use hairy vetch or radish um, in your fall plots, but you'll probably see some of that maybe in a later video if we come back and film here this fall. But it's only because it was in my uh, production acres, my cover crop. So we're gonna spread this using the Fimco spreader, make it nice and easy on the back of the ranger, and then I'll just clip it off and go to the next plot. plots that were soybeans planted into rye, a rye cover crop from last year. This one's maybe a half acre and then across that ditch there's about another half acre. And I said in last night's video that my intentions were to rent a grain drill from NRCS and then come in here and no-till drill our fall blend into here, winter rye, crimson clover. Um, but this has not canopied over. We're in a severe drought here and there's probably pretty good deer pressure. And this is actually ideal conditions for overseeding. The ground is saturated, which is ironic. We're in a severe drought. We've had no rain basically all summer, but we got about five inches in the last, what, week? Yeah. Um, so the ground is saturated. We're calling for 70 or 80% chance of rain tomorrow night. So that's like ideal uh, overseeding conditions, a saturated topsoil, more rain on the way. So I'm not going to be renting a no-till grain drill this year. We're going to overseed winter rye and crimson clover. And again, there's radish and hairy vetch in that cover crop seed on both of these plots. So I'll turn the camera on and I'll show you how it's just not, it's between the browse pressure and the drought. It just has not canopied over. These beans are hit pretty hard.
So the last few plots we have on the cabin farm are transition plots. So it'll be the same thing, winter rye, crimson clover, cover crop seed has got radish and hairy vetch in it. But what I'm gonna add here are soybeans. And the only reason why I'm doing this is because I have extra soybeans that are already a year old from my production acres. These are acre gold, Roundup Ready soybeans. It doesn't even matter because I don't plan on doing any kind of spraying. But I'm gonna go ahead and put down a bunch of soybeans. It's too late in the year, they won't put on pods. Um, and they will obviously winter kill with the first hard frost. But deer really love soybeans. So these will come up, the rye will come up with it, the crimson clover will come up with it. And then when these die off with the first frost, then the winter rye and the crimson clover will take over. So I wouldn't go out and necessarily buy soybeans to do this, but I had extra beans that are you know technically free because otherwise I'm gonna toss them, they're already a year old. So that'll be what I do in the next, I'm thinking two or three plots we have left, transition plots. It'll be winter rye, crimson clover, a little bit of uh, hairy vetch, a little bit of uh, radish, and then these beans. Oh, one last thing. These will be lightly dissed. So I'll go back to the cabin and I'll put my disc and I'll actually, I'm gonna turn the gangs way in so they, they're not very aggressive and I'll lightly disc this stuff in so that the beans um, can get in the ground a little bit so they'll germinate. I'll just spread these beans first and then we'll come back and do the rye mix. So that's pretty much it for putting in the fall plots. These last couple plots, like I said, I'm running the disc with the gangs pretty straight. And you probably can't tell by this video here, but they're just barely scratching, maybe a half inch. You just want to throw a little bit of dirt around, hopefully get some dirt on top of those soybeans. That's why you can still see a lot of vegetation. So broadcast method works really good if you have plenty of moisture and you're expecting a decent amount of rain. If not, a little bit of incorporation, like a light disking, which is what I'm doing here, works really good. Or if you have access to a no-till drill or you can rent a no-till drill. The bottom line here is winter rye, crimson clover are my staple food plot blends for the fall. You can add radish, peas, turnips, but then you just need to back off on your crimson clover, your winter rye. I don't do a lot of that stuff anymore. I did in the past and I just find that I don't need to anymore. The crimson clover is an awesome attractant. The winter rye is an awesome attractant. And a lot of my pass-through plots or transition plots, I'm not expecting them to be super highly attractive and nutritious because I want the deer to come into these plots and then leave and head out to my destination plots. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, had a lot of fun making it for you. And uh, we'll see you next time.